So what's your take with the way things have changed in this country? Would you say that we're heading the right way as a country? Negative. Negative. No, why, Trudeau, why do you say that? Trudeau needs to get out of there. Yeah, I mean, I would say we're certainly heading in good ways and bad ways. I mean, given the housing shortage, there's not enough housing in this country. Because if I vote the one guy in again, two years later, we could all hate him, mm -hmm. right? We were all in love with Justin Trudeau when he said legal marijuana, but then 90% of the people I talk to are F that guy. Mm -hmm. Who do you think is the right person to step in office and make a change uh, man, with this upcoming election? Politicians are all assholes, man. Because I believe that that was part of Polyev's platform, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And he said it before, and now all of a sudden Trudeau's doing this 360 yeah. and wanting to slow down mm -hmm. immigration. Uh, I feel that uh, the world needs to give the rest of the lower income families a break. Anybody in this country still thinks that Trudeau is okay? Yeah. Our retards. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. With everything you just said, mm -hmm. is there anyone that you're leaning towards a bit with this upcoming election in 2025? Is there anyone that you think that could make a change in this country? Definitely not Trudeau. <laughs> But let's say if you had to vote today, who would you vote for? If I had to vote today? Oh boy, oh boy. Hamilton, Ontario. <laughs> Man, this city, bro. This city. I've heard many rumors about this city. Some say Hamilton is the worst city in Ontario. Or some say Hamilton is the armpit of Canada. Hey, I can go for days. But ladies and gentlemen, today we're in the hammer, AKA, Hamilton, Ontario. This is gonna be another political video. We're gonna be going around as usual, just talking to some of the local Canadians, hearing out their opinions with the way the economy has changed in this country. And we know that cities and towns have been affected in different ways and communities as well. So let's go talk to some of the local Hamiltonians and hear out their opinion. I'm gonna be honest, originally, I wasn't planning on shooting another video like this in Hamilton because I had already shot one here. Yeah. Yeah, you know what's crazy? My first political video was actually in this city. This is where it all started. Here. My first ever political video was in Hamilton. And it actually went viral. If you haven't checked it out yet, make sure you check it out. It'll be right here. Let's go talk to some of the locals and hear out their opinions about the economy. And what's it like living in Hamilton and all that, basically. All I know is that Hamilton is a big NDP zone slash liberal. Hey, according to my stats, I don't know. I did my research. You know what, let me actually pull the stats up real quick to show you guys. What do you guys think about Hamilton? No comment? Come on guys, we're all humans in the day. Spread the love, not the hate. Like why? Like, what, what am I doing wrong? I know I'm off a cliff. I know I look crazy, but I'm just a nice Canadian. That's what I mean right there. Like, they could have at least said something. Maybe some black, I don't know. But anyways, let's pull these stats up real quick. Nah, I'm joking. They're probably not feeling it. They're not in the mood. I don't blame them. Every single Canadian is feeling like that right now. Let's look at it together. I hope you guys can see this, but let's scroll down. Let's see. Is Hamilton a liberal city? Where's it at? Come on, Hamilton, where are you? Where are you? Guelph, there it is. Hamilton Center, NDP, Hamilton East, Stony Creek, liberal. Hamilton Mountain, liberal. Hamilton West, Ancaster, Dundas, liberal. So Hamilton's a pretty big liberal slash NDP zone. But as I was saying though, I'm probably gonna cut this video in three, into three parts. I'm gonna do one downtown, and then I might do another one towards Ancaster and Dundas, and then one more near, uh, what's that one place called? Caledonia? Yeah, near Caledonia. Also, just like I always say, this is one of many election videos I'll be dropping on this channel until 2025. So if you're new to the channel, make sure you like this video and subscribe so you don't miss out for any future videos just like this. Come on now, who else is doing what I'm doing right now? Look at this. Come on. I can't lie, Hamilton is looking nice right now. But anyways, let's go. Don't record me jumping over. It's gonna look illegal. Wait, I got it. I got it. Hamilton? Okay, okay, born and raised in Hamilton, huh? Yeah. Okay, first question. What's it like to live in Hamilton, my friend? Uh, well, living in Hamilton my whole life, um, things definitely have changed, yeah. uh, especially in the past uh, numerous, uh, I don't know what, what'd you guys say? Ever since Started, things have definitely changed, yeah. right? Things have definitely changed in the downtown core of Hamilton. Um, For the good or bad, though? 
Uh, well, for the bad, actually. I mean, we you can just read comments on any news article yeah. talking about homeless and stuff like that, homelessness and stuff like this. And uh, but things have definitely changed. Mm -hmm. Is the mayor doing a good job, like enforcing a law down here or combating the homelessness crisis down here? Uh, well, frankly, no. Uh, I think in Hamilton, I could be wrong, but I think in Hamilton we're considered a sanction city. Oh, yeah. So I think part of the problem is is that uh, other uh, jurisdictions homelessness are coming into Hamilton because they know that uh, they can get away with really realistically sitting anywhere and doing anything. That why as a matter of fact uh, right down the road here is uh, usually like a, it looks like a public toilet but outside right yeah. and that never really used to be and it just seems like uh, anything is uh, put off to the side by even policing mm -hmm. right uh, I if I can walk uh, down the road and see someone openly doing uh, drugs with their pipes and whatnot how can the police not see it and that's concerning just as uh, yeah. someone walking around right yeah. what's something that you kind of don't like about the city like your least favorite thing about the city the least favorite thing about the city yeah. Well, from a guy that just goes to work and goes home, the least favorite thing, it's honestly, in the past numerous years, it's gotta be that homelessness, okay. just because it, it's changed so much. Yeah. It, it makes the city look completely different when you're in the downtown core and you can't walk 30 feet without walking over, yeah. you name it, right? Uh, that's probably the least favorite thing I like yeah. about the city, but right. that's, I wouldn't say that's even just a city problem right now. I think that's a can Canada problem, yeah. right? Yeah. But what's, what's your take on the Canadian economy? The economy? Yeah. Um, it, it, it's tanked. Mm -hmm. It's tanked. Yeah. Like people are struggling mm -hmm. to just put food on the table. Yeah. And you see the people on the streets, yes, I right? Have, I have. Yeah. They they really they don't have a chance. Mm -hmm. You know, and nothing's being done really that I see to help them. Well, would you say that the government doesn't really focus on its own people anymore in this country? Uh, n not not in the right ways. I don't think. Okay. No, I yeah. really don't. Mm -hmm. I, th I think right now, because, you know, there's going to be an election yeah, in the next sure. year or so, yeah, around the corner, yeah. they're too busy right now trying to prove who's the better yeah. of the two, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I like some of their platforms are just, yeah. you know, like Polyev with his with the LGBTQ community and, and kids not being able to be who they are. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, I don't think they're focused entirely on the big picture for sure for sure right and your opinion what do you think is a big picture that they should be focusing on um i think they need to well trudeau's already said he's slowing down immigration for well, now we've seen that yeah right? that video huh we've seen that so, yeah let's see that happen and let's see people get into affordable housing mm -hmm. so they're not rent broke or mortgage broke so they can afford to f to feed their families yeah. not be on the street mm -hmm. maybe that's a start yeah yeah right mm -hmm. Um, maybe go after the big grocery chains who are like, how is it that all these different grocery stores have such fluctuations in prices? Yeah. You know, like I, I look around at the different stores because yeah. I actually do a lot of Instacart shopping, mm -hmm. right? And I go to the different ones to see, and sometimes the price variations, even on yogurt, oh. right? Mm -hmm. Like how is one store for the same yogurt eight bucks? and another store's five bucks. So, you know, they got to start with the price gouging, affordable housing, right? Yeah. Make sure the people that are already here have somewhere to live, mm -hmm. can afford to live before bringing in more people. For sure, for sure. Right? Yeah, and I just want to go back to Trudeau real quick yeah. because you mentioned that Trudeau's kind of going to focus on slowing down immigration. Yeah. And I think that's a good thing, but why do you think he's kind of trying to fix that now? I in your own think, opinion, do you I think, think no, go ahead. Yeah. Do you think that he's trying, he's only fixing that, like he's going to try to fix this, this uh, situation because the elections are around the corner? I do. Yeah. I do. Absolutely. Because I believe that that was part of Polyev's platform, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And okay. he said it before, and now all of a sudden Trudeau's doing this 360 yeah. and wanting to slow down mm -hmm. immigration. Mm -hmm. So, and I think it's, he's hoping to get votes because he's, he's not looking good. Yeah. You he's know, not looking good. Yeah. Not sure. at all. Not at all. So I think he's looking for votes, to be honest. What's your take with the way things have changed in this country? Would you say that we're heading the right way as a country? Negative. Negative. No, why, Trudeau, why do you say that? Trudeau needs to get out of there. Mm -hmm. Trudeau needs... He, his wife left him. She yeah. had a, a cushy, cushy job. She's traveling around the world yeah. having luxury dinners and fight, all that stuff. How bad is 
is Justin mm -hmm. for someone to leave him, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. If she sees he's on a tilt, everybody sees he's on a tilt. He's got to go. Mm -hmm. He's got to go. Would you say life has been harder for some Canadians to live since Justin Trudeau has been Prime Minister? Oh, definitely. It's yeah. gone south. Absolutely. Absolutely. He's got to go. Do you think that it's right that Justin, Justin Trudeau has like sent over like billions of dollars outside of the country helping out like other people? Yes. Yes. The healthcare system here sucks. <laughs> it needs to get fixed quickly. Yeah. It's insane that people have to wait months and months. I had to wait six months to wow. get a bypass. That's horseshit. Yeah. All right. That is yeah. absolute horseshit. Mm -hmm. Why is it you can get an MRI in Buffalo, same day, yep. next day, and here you got to wait six months for it? Wow. That's bullshit. Yeah, that's that's bad. Right? Yeah, and I'm pretty sure a lot of Canadians can actually relate to what you're saying. Uh huh. Yeah. So some Trudeau needs to get his ass. Mm -hmm. bury his head and whatever I can't stand the prick <laughs> <laughs> do, do you think the liberals still trust, still trust the liberals Justin Trudeau? are idiots plain and simple yeah. conservative mm -hmm. Paul Vieira or whatever the, yeah. tighten it You're spending money like drunken sailors mm -hmm. stop the nonsense mm -hmm. take care of take care of Canadians mm -hmm. take care of seniors you know mm -hmm. Is there anyone that you're leaning towards a bit? You know, we know the elections are around the corner, it's coming up. Honestly, I tend to stay away from it. I know that voting does make a difference, but I also feel like if, if I voted and complained, you know, did it really make a difference, right? It's, it's, I'm really on the fence whether uh, it makes a difference or not. Because if I vote the one guy in again, two years later, we could all hate him, mm -hmm. right? We were all in love with Justin Trudeau when he said legal marijuana, but then, 90% of the people I talk to are F that guy. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to say well, who's, who's the right man for the job, right? They can all walk the walk, but then they get in power and can they talk the talk, right? But I think that we need to start giving back a little bit more to the community, the people in this country, the people who desperately need it. Mm -hmm. I was talking about homelessness. Yep. I know for a fact, we don't have enough shelters in any of our cities. Mm -hmm. We don't have enough places for these people to go, enough services and stuff like this. A lot of our politicians will talk about it, but they don't like, to make changes, I don't know why. Their budgets, I'm not a part of the budgeting. I don't know where the money goes, but I sure as know where I would put some of the money if I was in charge. Yeah, I noticed that you said that we need changes in this country and the city itself, like Hamilton. Yes. So my question for you is, do you think that it's right that, you know, throughout the years we have seen that, you know, Justin Trudeau has brought many people to this country. Mm -hmm. Do you think that it's right that they're bringing in these people, like the migrants and giving them houses and shelters well, Canada's homeless people aren't really getting that support? So I've taken a look uh, around the world. I, I see Ireland has got a big, huge problem uh, with immigrants coming into the country. Yeah. Uh, and it's led to full hotels uh, where even a tourist can't get a, a hotel room. Yeah. Um, they've seen culture change, uh, which some people are for, some people are against. Um, but I can understand that with uh, some people that are against uh, the culture change and seeing yeah. vast differences coming in, why that would be concerning. Mm -hmm. I know that the, uh, the Japanese are big on uh, trying to keep their culture yeah. fr uh, from being outside influenced and to keep their history, their traditions and whatnot. And I think a lot of average people are like that. Yeah but also get uh, a tagline associated with something said by like that, right? Where that's just not right for some reason and stuff. Mm -hmm. Bottom line is though, if you invite too many people with not enough places for them to go and infrastructure like what I was talking about, yes. you're gonna run into problems. Mm -hmm. Frankly, we're in those problems now and without lowering some of the numbers, yes. uh, we're just gonna keep running into more and more problems. Mm -hmm. well, that's just an opinion, I'm not an expert. Mm -hmm. That's just an opinion. No, I'm pretty sure every single Canadian watching could agree with you. I'm pretty sure they can agree with you. So my other question for you is, uh, earlier you said that you wouldn't really vote for anyone because, you know, I don't blame you in the past. Just like you said, a lot of broken promises have mm -hmm. been, you know, broken. So I don't blame you if you don't really have faith in anyone. But from what I've seen, you know, I've interviewed many Canadians and the majority of them that I've, you know, talked to, they're saying that the... There's a guy named Pierre Polyev. I don't know if you know him. He's a leader. Of, of course a I do. Now, because <laughs> there's only a couple people around to talk about when it comes to politics and who's running and who's going to okay. win or lose, right? Yeah. Um, but again, he, the guy who's walking the walk for a lot of people that do want change, yeah. that could all change in two years after becoming in power. Mm -hmm. Reason why I don't vote, number one, is just because I could sit there and be all high and mighty about one person yeah. thinking he could do a good job, but bureaucracy and laws that are exist now necessarily are uh, 
not easy to change, yeah. right? And, and rules that apply now can't just be changed overnight. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I've heard about the fella. He uh, seems to be, uh, well, more for the people in the, in the talking aspect of mm -hmm. it. Uh, if he gets in power, he'll have to walk the walk because we are looking for somebody that wants to or should be held accountable. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, isn't it in Canada that he can stay around almost as long as possible, unlike the United States, where yeah. they only got four year terms? Mm -hmm. So if you can walk the walk, there's no reason why he can't stay longer than four years. Right? Trudeau's done it, mm -hmm. but uh, I think it's time for a change. Mm -hmm. And bottom line, I think every, at least every eight years, we need to change anyways. Yeah just to keep things uh, different. Everyone's opinion does matter. Yeah. What you guys doing? I'm a journalist. For? I'm an independent journalist. Okay. Yeah, and I'm just going around talking to some of the local Canadians, hearing out their opinion with the way the economy has changed. Oh, it's changed a lot. Yeah, and what's your, what's your take on the economy? Uh, I feel that uh, the world needs to give the rest of the lower income families a break mm -hmm. and uh, try and help some of the homeless get off the streets because Everybody needs a place to go. For sure, for sure. And I mean, that's what I see. That's what I feel needs to be taken mm -hmm. care of mm -hmm. in order to get further ahead in life, yeah. right? Yeah. So. In your own opinion, based off from what you have seen on social media or just in general with the way you have seen mm -hmm. things have kind of changed in this country, in your own opinion, would you say that equality is still a thing in this country? Um... It, it, it's a matter of give and take on equality okay. because uh, if you give it, yeah. like you give somebody quality care and attention you'll get that equality care and attention back if you don't then you're not going to get it <laughs> so would you say there's some people in this country that kind of get special treatment in your own opinion um some do mm -hmm. uh, i notice uh, and i mean i have nothing wrong against third world countries that come over and are looking for a better life yeah, for sure. but uh, in the same respects they should also worry about what's going on in our own country yeah. to get what is needed here done before we stretch out our hand to yeah. help the others mm -hmm. with with that being said no i'm not saying that we shouldn't help them i'm just saying let's worry about what's in our own back fence yeah. before we go worrying about what's around the rest of the world yeah. do you think that it's right that they're getting houses and shelters as soon as they get here while homeless canada well homeless of no, canada are not really getting that support that i disagree with that totally i believe that um with the amount of population of uh, homelessness and people struggling over here just to get like a stick of bread and a loaf of uh, butter. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, the other way around. Mm -hmm. But even just to get that, the government is not even, like they're giving you a big, huge loophole that you've got to jump mm -hmm. in order to get just those two particular things that, you know, become natural to somebody else. Yeah. Whereas when they come over, they get home they get car they get a, a buck or two more than what were anticipated meanwhile over here you're sitting there looking at your regular joes that are sitting in the park and they're look, you're looking at them going well how come what's wrong with them mm. they've been here they're struggling yes. they're veterans some of them yeah why can't we get off our butt and help them get into a place and get them some help that is required mm. and that's just how i see the world like i mean we need there's more there should be more people out there who's willing to get the shirt off their back mm, for sure for sure yeah you know what my friend it's too much stuff i'm not in the mood for to have all this talk Come right on, brother. okay well, what about this what about this who do you think is the right person to step in office and make a change uh, man, with this upcoming election? Politicians are all assholes, man. They're all playing us. With, uh, uh, the has us divided. They, they play up for the corporations and not for the people, man. Not for the people, huh? No. Nah. So what do you think about Justin Trudeau? They're all assholes, man. All, all of them. them? All right. Take care, brother. So like Trudeau last time, right? He campaigned for the middle class. Yeah. Do the middle class need, really need that help? What about the poor, the lower class? The people that can't get their kids food or can't get dentists at the time, right? Yeah. Or medicine, all that stuff, right? Yeah. Where families have to decide between food and other things, you know? Yeah. What about them? He didn't campaign for them. So my friend, we know um, a lot of things have changed in this country. Mm -hmm. So my, my question for you is, what's your take with the way, you know, Canada has changed? Would you say that we're heading the right way as a country with everything you have seen? Yeah, I mean, I would say we're certainly heading in good ways and bad ways. I mean, given the housing shortage, I mean, I'm a real estate agent, so I've, I've seen it firsthand. There's not enough housing in this country. There's just plain and simple, not enough housing. And there's not enough tradespeople to build the housing. Mm -hmm. 
right? Yeah. So you're looking at lots of different companies that are clearly building, like you see just in this general vicinity, mm -hmm. you've got a number of new builds, yeah, you know? Seen, yeah. But it takes time to build them, mm -hmm. you know? It takes years, it takes two to three years, and when you're mm -hmm. living in a housing crisis, waiting two to three years for housing is a long time. Yeah. What are folks gonna do in the time being? And not to mention the housing that is available isn't always the desirable housing yeah. or the affordable options exactly. as well. It's very so, expensive nowadays, huh? But, but to, yeah, definitely. But, but speaking on the positive notes, I mean, with immigration, I, I believe being first generation Canadian, yeah. I mean, my parents immigrated back in the 80s. I've watched sort of this Canadian dream unfold in front of me. Mm -hmm. You know, my parents coming here with little to nothing and building up, ha yeah. owning a home, having an asset, you know, I think is, is really the Canadian dream that people are after. And mm -hmm. having immigration here in the country always puts us in a step in the right direction yeah. because we've got people coming here that want to learn, that want to contribute, that mm -hmm. we gain knowledge, we gain skills, we gain professionals mm -hmm. by bringing people into the country. But unfortunately, we just don't have enough housing, not mm -hmm. only just for Canadians, but for people coming into the country, mm -hmm. just in general. Mm -hmm. Would you say that with the amount of people that were brought into this country, mm -hmm. it kind of, you know, made things unstable? And, and it's hard to say if it's just immigration that made things unstable. Um, I think it's just the lack of, of, of building enough of it mm -hmm. in a timely manner mm -hmm. that made it unstable. Because immigration has been a thing for a long time. Yeah, a long We've time always sure. brought millions, if not hundreds of thousands of people here and have always been always able to house them. Yeah. But suddenly we're not able to. Mm -hmm. So that raises a red flag for me. Why is that? Yeah. Is it the cost of goods? Is it the lack of tradespeople, the lack of just manpower, you know, or just people power in general building these homes? Yeah. It's hard to say. I mean, these questions are alarming. I just don't, I don't think it's one thing to blame. I think it's a, it's a grouping of things, but uh, yeah, hopefully that answers your question. With everything you just said, mm -hmm. is there anyone that you're leaning towards a bit with this upcoming election in 2025? Is there anyone that you think that could make a change in this country? Definitely not Trudeau. <laughs> uh, the only thing he did great was bring marijuana into the system. But other than that, everything else he's done, like with the carbon tax, I really don't, I'm not much of a uh, political voter, but um, if I was to choose and I had a choice, which I do, I'd have to go with the, um, the, the not the liberals, the, the other ones. Conservative? The conservative party. Yeah. Only because they seem to be following through with what they're, uh, going after, whereas the liberals, they're too worried about financial gain, mm -hmm. is what I see. Uh, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Well, what do you think about Justin Trudeau? You know, would you say the country <laughs> has been heading the right way with him being... Uh, it did. It did for a little bit, and then all of a sudden he turned to, like, a big, huge, freaking like, right turn, and everybody just went... Oh! Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's it, it's going to take a lot for, for everybody to earn his trust back, because he's really detrusted a lot of people he's broken a lot of trust with them with promises and stuff like that that he's you know put out there on the table but yet nobody's really seen anything happen yeah, for sure. But that's pretty much my, my mm -hmm. overall view of it. And I, I noticed that you said that you want to see the conservatives win. Yes. So my question for you is, what's the first thing that you think Pierre Polyev, you know, he's the leader of the conservatives. What do you think he's going to do for his country if he gets elected? I think personally, he's going to try and get some of these homelessness, the homeless people and the drug addicted people that are, that are really severely yeah. bad out there. I think he's going to try and reach out and try and get them up off the street and yeah. try to get them proper recovery mm -hmm. so that, you know, stretch out that hand, that extended arm, you know, give that bear hug and say, hey, mm -hmm. there's somebody here for you. Yep, brought so many people into this country and uh -huh. now he wants to kind of fix uh -huh. the immigration problem. What's so he gonna fix? What's he gonna fix? He's gonna fix nothing. He's a retard, mm -hmm. plain and simple. Yep. That's it. Mm -hmm. the, he caused the problem. Yep. How the hell is he gonna fix it? Would you say he's trying to fix things now oh, since the elections are on the corner? Does it now? He's gonna, no, no, no. He'll lie. <laughs> mm -hmm. Conservative Polvier, that's it. Okay. Done deal. Yeah. What's your take on Pierre Polyev? He's solid. Mm -hmm. He's sharp. Yeah. What is Absolutely. And he makes a conservative and he's going to, you know, tighten the belt and start taking care of Canadians. Natural native born Canadians that have been 
paying taxes since the day they were, you know, pretty much uh, got a mm -hmm. job. Yeah. And, uh, and now we're being neglected. Now we're just being kicked to the curb to bring in new people to this country. And that's yeah. a wonderful thing. Yeah. But quit neglecting us. Mm -hmm. What well, would you say equality isn't a thing in this country anymore? What do you mean by quality? Like, for example, uh, just this year alone, he spent $1.5 billion to Ukraine refugees. Mm -hmm. And some Canadians were pretty, you know, mad about that because... I like, am too. Yeah. I am too. Mm -hmm. Hell, do I have to take a flight to Ukraine and pretend I'm a Ukrainian and come over here to get that kind of t treatment? Yeah. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Every, my parents are immigrants and uh, they did everything the right way with no handouts. Yeah. Nobody gave them shit. Mm -hmm. You know, they came over to this country and worked like a lot of the immigrants mm -hmm. who came to this country. Mm -hmm. And nobody gave anybody shit. Yeah. That generation, my parents' generation, that came over to this country are solid, mm -hmm. solid people. Yeah. And nobody gave them shit. Mm -hmm. They were from all over the world. Yeah. And they couldn't speak to each other because they were all different languages. Yeah. And they made it work. They just made it work. Mm -hmm. And that's impressive. Mm -hmm. So I don't buy this shit. Immigrants do it the way my parents did, no problem. Mm -hmm. And what are some policies, like, what makes you so excited to see Pierre Polyev step in office and make a change for this country? He'll tighten the belt. He'll just, that's it. Mm -hmm. You know, just do all the things that need to be done to put Canadians first. Okay, yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah. There's a saying that Pierre Polyev says, is axe attacks, build the homes, fix the budget, stop the crime. What's your take on that? Do you believe that he's truly going to stick on what he's saying or he's just saying that's against the office? Well, I hope he sticks, you know, I hope he sticks with what he's saying, but it's politics. So he's going to get pushed by other people, other parties, other, a lot of crap. They're going to, you know, smear him and this and that and the other thing. If he can get it done yeah. without all those opponents trying to bury his agenda yep. then we'll be in good shape mm -hmm. so people yep. need to get on board it's time for change time for change huh? radical change <laughs> so you think pierre Polyev is the right person i to absolutely think yeah. so and my last question is mm -hmm. what's the message you have for the people out there who are thinking about voting for justin Trudeau to get them to vote for pierre Polyev? get your head checked <laughs> 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 Seriously, get your head checked. That's the message, huh? If anybody in this country still thinks that Trudeau is okay, yeah. are retards. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I see. So, for, I used to be a liberal supporter. I did for a long time. I was kind of raised that way, right? It was in my family. And then I started leaning, and this was because of Jack Layton. I leaned towards NDP. Yeah. I love Jack Layton. Mm -hmm. And I kind of stuck with that for a while. But now I'm kind of like, you know, I just, I don't know. You don't know how? I'll tell you one thing though, my biggest fear is that what's happened in the States is, yes. is going to affect greatly kind of how our election goes, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Would you say that with Donald Trump being the president now, in your own opinion, we know that they had a huge migrant crisis and we also kind of had the same thing. I'm not going to compare it to America because they're near, you know, yeah. the borders is next level. It's different yeah. from ours. Yeah. In your own opinion, do you think that a lot of uh, illegal immigrants are going to try to flee deportation from Donald Trump and kind of come over to Canada? I think they're going to try. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure we, we I don't know if you've seen the news, but recently um, they're saying that they're going to need over 3,000 or 4,000 guards at yeah. the Canadian border yeah. just in case if they start running over. Back way because oh, the yeah. border's there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a, a strong likelihood that they're going to try and come over here. And I feel bad for those people. I do. Yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah. So I really do feel I couldn't imagine being in that much fear, yeah. right, of just trying to be somewhere where you're safe yes right yeah so i just i just really hope that we can still just be canada and not start going the way the states are going mm -hmm. for sure you know and that'll depend a lot on who our leader is and yeah i, I don't have a lot of faith in them i don't so would you say that it's voting in between of two of less evils yeah absolutely yeah. absolutely i do i do i you know i kind of I see some of Polyev's points, but I also, I see too much where he's against marginalized people, I feel like, right? And you can't, you've got to be for all the people. 
all the people. You don't have to agree with somebody's lifestyle or, do you know what I mean? Yes. But I think as a leader, you shouldn't be so divisive when it comes to that. You know, I, I get they think they're protecting children who are wanting to trans, like that are trans, mm -hmm. but they don't just wake up one day and decide that's who they are. Yeah, that's true. Okay? Mm -hmm. They don't become that way because, you know, they didn't have a dad on site or because their friends are, right? Like, I don't know. It's, it's, there's so, so many issues. <laughs> so would you, so you think that Polyev could be like a dictator in a way? In a way. I think in he has way. those tendencies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's your take on the average Canadian nowadays not being able to get a job? We've seen that just in general, you know, many Canadians nowadays suffer with either getting a job or just in general, like our healthcare system, we could talk about. Mm -hmm. Like I've actually spoken to some Canadians. Some of them say that uh, it took them actually six months just to see a doctor. And uh, they were kind of saying like, there's just too many people. There's just not enough room in a way. So my question for you is what do you like, what's your take on the average Canadian nowadays not being able to get a job? I mean, I'm, I was one of those people. Before I had gotten this full-time position, I had been unemployed from January up until May. It took me about, what's that, January, February, March, April, May, about five to six months to gain full-time employment. Um, it, it was tough, you know, I got let go from a previous job and I was, a, I was applying like it was my job. You know, I'm, I'm talking like hundreds of applications yeah. per day you know, numerous of like, you know, sorry, sorry, you know, we're, we're moving forward with somebody else. Yeah. Um, it's tough. I mean, the average Canadian, I think, is generally disgruntled by the, the state of, of uh, the economy in this, yeah. in this country. I mean, if you're a doctor, if you're a lawyer, if you have generational wealth, you're not realizing those types of issues. But... If you're anyone like myself, just average, middle-class upbringing, you're generally struggling. Generally struggling, and the, and the wait times as well. I mean, I know I can't really speak to the wait times. I had, I have nothing but good things to say about the healthcare system. Oh, sure, I think it's sure. very near and dear to my heart because sure. uh, my mom and I had gone through a liver transplant together. I had donated a liver to yes. her, and that was in the middle of and we were able to get a surgery, we were able to get, you know, get it going. It did take time, yep. I will admit. Yep. Anyways, I can go on and on about that. Mm -hmm. But um, I do admit, yeah, healthcare is overrun. I know you said you don't really have anyone that you're thinking about right now, yeah. but let's say if you had to vote today, who would you vote for? If I had to vote today, just based on not really, I would probably, to be perfectly honest, I would probably go for the Green Party. Green Party? Even though, you know, people would say that's throwing away your vote. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, because it, it would be worse if I just decided not to vote. Mm -hmm. that's true, um, that's sure. Once upon a time, I did throw in an empty ballot because it is considered a vote of non-confidence, right? But no, I think if it was today, if it was today, I would vote Green Party. Having said that, in the next, until this election pops up, I'm just going to be paying more attention For sure. to see how how things work out when Trump is actually in office and what goes on with our government going forward, right? Because unfortunately, a lot of what goes on with Canada is influenced because of the states. It's, you know, they're our neighbor. Yeah, so, sure. For sure. yeah. yeah. Just saying, I don't blame you from having that type of feeling, yeah. not, you know, not really being sure to vote for. Yeah. And I know for a fact, a lot of Canadians can agree with you. In my, in my opinion, I think a lot of Canadians, I think a lot of Canadians are actually not gonna vote a lot. Probably. Once again, you know, I don't blame them. This country's been through a lot. Yeah. Just like some of them say, a lot of broken promises have been broken. Yeah. So my question for you is, what's the message you have for the people out there who are not like, to kind of like get them to like st still have hope in a way what's the message you have for them to kind of come out and vote because at the end of the day their vote still matters it even if matter. they don't feel like voting it still matters do your research go with your own gut don't follow your neighbors don't follow social media Sorry. because there's a lot of memes out there that are <laughs> you know it, it social media is the worst yeah right you i think you for anybody there's not if if you don't vote if you don't have a say then 
I think you don't really have a lot of hope, right? Yeah. You have to have your say, whether it gets who you want in office in, mm -hmm. at least you've had your say, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, and it, it, it does reflect. Yeah. So just do the research do the and <laughs> Go with what you think is the best. For sure. Yeah. I hope you guys heard that, you know, take that message. Thank you so much. But anyways, if you made it into the video, I just want to say thank you. Like this video, it's gonna help me a lot. Just show me support. If you really enjoy it, the best way you can show it to me is just by liking this video. So like this video. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. So we're out.